Hello, hello, everybody. Can you guys, <laughs> let's see. Can you guys hear me? Oh, what am I doing here? Okay, we're good. I'm just setting things up on the computer so I can, there we go, now it's showing. How's everybody doing? Hi, Quinn. Oscar, Jackson's Chameleon, very cool. Very, very cool. So, for those of you that don't know, we're all gathered here. I mean, I'm gonna wait a little bit to, to let more people in to the stream, so I'll wait a bit. Um, but you'll see me looking back and forth. That's because I have my um, iPhone set up here so that I can chat with you guys. And then I have my, let me see if I can turn this, my computer up here. And you saw Lucas the spider. <laughs> so that you guys can uh, chat with me and I can type and comment my multitasking thing. Damien, thank you. Actually, I didn't get a haircut. I just decided to trim off my uh, Bigfoot beard earlier. So I still haven't got a haircut. I booked a haircut, but with the whole situation and whatnot outside in the world. Um, I'm like on a waiting list at the barber for like two weeks before I can get a haircut. So it's gonna be some time. Quinn asks, are you going to show the artwork for 100K? I am actually still working on that because despite the fact that we're doing this unboxing together, because I really want this to be a shared moment altogether, um, I am still planning to put together some sort of uh, kind of thank you 100K celebration video. It's funny because the longer I wait, <laughs> the more we're getting ahead of that. We're already at 104, almost 105K. Um, but I do have something really special in mind. So anyhow, so we already have 38 people here, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was hard to decide what time to schedule this for because I know that so many of you are in Europe and other parts of the world besides North America and I wanted you to have the opportunity to be a part of this. I know that even five o'clock my time is pretty late for a lot of you so I appreciate you Night Owl showing up and I know that some of you here are still at work so it is uh, kind of tricky but uh, I hope that this worked. I hope this was uh, conducive to a good amount of you joining me today. So thank you so much. Nura, thank you very much for the super chat. I see that. That's actually my sister, guys. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Love you very much. It's very sweet of you. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we got, we got 56 people here now. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. So today we are all gathered here because of this arriving in the mail. Um, friends, it goes without saying that the reason I am holding this in my hands is because of each and every one of you. And you all know how important community is to me. Oh, I don't want to get emotional here, but you know, I can be a cheese ball. It's just, I wouldn't have this made some things fall. I wouldn't have this if it weren't for all of you. And so when I thought about it, as hard as it was to resist opening this, I didn't want to do it unless you would all be there to see it happen. You can see like nothing is open. The only thing I did is scribbled out my address and stuff so no one stalks me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, like this has not been open. But this, <laughs> this has been years of work. You know, I've had my YouTube channel since 2009, and although I didn't really start taking YouTube seriously as a potential job for myself till maybe four or five years ago, I've worked at this for so long, and yeah, this is just such an exciting milestone, and I feel so blessed and honored to uh, be able to share this with you all now. So. 
Uh, I don't want to build too much suspense and make you wait, but maybe we'll wait like a few minutes, um, see if the audience goes up at all in the next like two, three minutes. And if it stays around the same, we'll just go ahead and open it. But I want to give everybody the opportunity to tune in if they're still kind of running late. But so for now, let's just chat a little bit. You know, if you guys want to ask some questions or you saw no tears, eh? you saw nothing. But yeah, if you guys want to just chat a bit, we can do that for a few minutes and then we will open this together. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, uh, Mathieu asks, how are you today? Or Mathieu, or Matthew, uh, I'm doing great. I'm a little like butterfly jittery right now because of this and all of you being here and I just feel so thankful and honored. Uh, but I'm doing really well and I hope you're do doing well too. <laughs> I had to catch myself. Thank you, everybody, for all the congratulations, uh, all the congratulating. I'm trying to keep up with all these comments. There's a lot of you saying things, so thank you. Uh, Jam, now that you have this play button, we can work towards the diamond one. Quickly, everyone, subscribe to Diamond. Yes, thank you. That would be sweet. Well, one step at a time, but for sure, that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Let's see, great work on the channel, it grew super fast. Thanks, Aiden. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you on here too, my man. Thanks, Nora. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try and go through some of these questions. Again, sorry if I've missed anyone. Uh, so weird seeing like a side shot of myself on the computer because the phone is here. Um, okay, let's see. Jam, I gotta say I love how friendly this community is. I definitely want to comment on that because honestly, I'm so grateful for that. Um, I'm sure a lot of that does have to do about like the vibe and everything I, I try my best to create through my content, but I'm really enthusiastic and honored about the type of people this um, platform or not platform, this channel has brought together. And I like to think that for the most part, everyone is very friendly towards one another. One of the things I love to see is when you guys are in my comments and answering each other's questions. And I think that's super sweet because not only does it help me as the channel grows and it becomes more tricky for me to respond to everybody, but it's just really nice to see everyone actively contributing to uh, helping each other learn that makes sense so for sure I'm very grateful that our community is so kind and unified okay I'm scrolling down bro I'm sorry I gotta go hey thanks so much for tuning in I appreciate it Valerie congratulations from South Africa you show humility with your gratitude I love your channel and the way you love your pets thank you so much Valerie really appreciate it Danica, <laughs> it's true. As a Canadian, it is your job to be kind. It is my job to be kind too. I agree. Jaden, how is it going with Basil? Basil is doing fantastic. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I shared a little sneak peek story of me tong feeding him a silkworm. He's not out right now, but I did just feed him some crickets earlier. And like, we're slowly making some progress. I mean, the fact that he was accepting food off tongs was already pretty awesome. Uh, definitely nice to see that. But yeah, he's he's come a long way. So I don't know that I'll have an update on him just yet, just because I'd like to see there be more progress before we do an update. Like it's not that big of a difference yet, but definitely just for you to know, uh, he's come a long way. Yari, I must convince, uh, convince, I must confess, I have not actually told her yet. I'm so sorry. I need to tell her that. Um, and then I'll be able to pass that along to you and let you know what she says. But I wasn't able to ask her yet. Sorry about that. Um, Barb, I love watching your videos, but I'm pretty quiet and have been for 65 years. That's okay. Thanks so much for your support. It means a lot. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
sorry if I'm saying it wrong, Sylvan, mm, well, Sylvan, I'll say that. The lighting I used for Sabzi, I have the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED system. I have two um, incandescent Exoterra basking lights. They're like, one's 100 watt, one's 150. And then there is also a 100 watt ceramic heat emitter. There's a lot of heat going into that tank. And um, then I have the Arcadia 6% UVB over her as well. And the reason why there's so much heat is because despite the fact that Exoterras do work as enclosures for tree monitors, they're not very good at insulating. And that is the issue. So even though there is a cork background on the wall, the sides, it's still not well insulated through the top. So you lose a lot of heat and you have to, yeah, I guess overcompensate with lots of lights on the enclosure. Um, so that's why there's so many. Going forward, when I eventually either work something out with a company to have one built or make my own enclosure for her, it'll definitely be more sealed off besides the glass panes in the front or panels in the front. Uh, so most likely I'll need a lot less heat lights in the enclosure because it'll retain that heat a lot better than in the Exoterra that's all glass with the uh, open screen top if that makes sense anonymous 347 greetings from germany greetings from canada arthropods ambassador the consideration kindness you show your animals is super inspiring glad to see so many people attracted to your content play button well deserved can't wait to see more from your channel thank you so much really appreciate it uh jam question are heat lamps easy to use do they have clear numbers of the temperature they set or sorry I said to no so the thing is that's why it's important to use a thermostat with the heat lights because different animals have different heating requirements and although you can kind of gauge the output by choosing the appropriate wattage uh, you definitely uh, will want to make sure that it's properly regulated with the thermostat I'm seeing something here. Let me just see. I need to scroll up here. It's hard to keep up here. There's so many questions. Aiden, do you know what the top countries where people watch from are? What countries they watch the most? I'd have to double check again. But, um, yeah, sorry. And then he says, uh, since the size of your channel and the people in the chat right now, it seems like people are from everywhere. I agree. It's true. So the last time I looked, interesting enough, if I recall my demographics, top demographics were as follows. So United States, generally speaking on YouTube, that's usually one of the highest um, countries for viewership. Then, interesting enough, after the US is the UK. And then after the UK, if I'm not mistaken, was I think Germany. And then after that, believe it or not, it like, it tends to jump between the Philippines and Canada. And then it kind of goes into different countries after that. But I thought that was so interesting and cool. Like the Philippines, what? That's awesome. So yeah, it, we have a little bit of everyone here and it's a little big planet. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, beautiful countries and I, I'm loving the unity and diversity, let's say. Okay, uh, Germany is cool, Danica. Haltera, I came here from the feeding collab you did with Petco. That was a lot of fun. Your videos are so wholesome and I love seeing the variety of animals you keep. My two and a half year old brother also loves watching your videos. Man, that's so wholesome. Thank you. Really appreciate your support and say hi to your brother. <laughs> Thank you for watching. All right, guys. So um, we're at 89 people right now, which is pretty solid. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and get started here. If you weren't here already, here it is. It's right here. And um, let's go ahead and uh, 
open this. I guess the moment that you've all been uh, waiting for. And uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to move the tripod. I apologize if things are a bit shaky. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I'm doing this the wrong way. Uh oh. Okay, guys, sorry. Bear with me. Just a sec. I need to turn my tripod around ever so slightly. Oh, look, you can see. No, you can't see anyone. Never mind. <laughs> They're not out. Okay. Here we go. This is this is exciting, everyone. This is really exciting. Holy mackerel. Okay. Hello, everyone. I see a lot of you coming in. So I'm going to do things the reptile vivarium enthusiast way with one of our handy dandy scrapers, of course. And uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead, everyone. This is the moment of truth. So I'm actually so stoked. Okay. We have this side too. Some tape here. A little more there. I think that is everywhere. Ooh. All right, all right. I'm going to back this up just a bit. There we go. I love how this is. There's my coffee as usual. Okay. Friends, thank you so much for joining. Drum roll, yes. The moment of truth. This is all because of you, friends. All because of you. Imagine if it's just empty. No, I'm kidding. Ooh. Okay. I haven't even seen a video of how these are packed, so I wasn't sure what to expect on this side. I thought it would just be the play button right there. Okay, okay. Oh man, very cool. Very cool. Some 100,000 subscribers. Just how far have you come? If each of your subscribers were a light year, they could take you from one side of the Milky Way to the other. That's far. And that's why today we're so excited to celebrate your special YouTube journey with you. And all of you guys. <laughs> Not only have you brought a unique voice and style to the world, you've also created valuable connections and built a community along the way. In the spirit, in that spirit, YouTube is proud to present you with a Silver Creator Award, which celebrates your hard work and incredible achievement. Congratulations on this amazing milestone. Just one of many that we hope you... I can't even read right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. That we hope will follow in the, in the future. After all, there are countless others out there who have yet to discover your passion and dedication. Whether they come to your channel to learn something new or just for a laugh, a whole new audience is waiting for you to inspire them, just as your growing community continues to inspire you. And seriously, guys, emphasis on that last part. We can't wait to see what you do next and we'll be with you every step of the way. Yours sincerely, Susan. Thank you. All right. Holy mackerel. Wow. Guys. I'm trying not to, Quinn. This is like... Wow. I don't even... Okay, well, it's in plastic. I don't even want to touch it. It's going to get fingerprints on it. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oops. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. It's like, wow. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, everybody. This is so sick. We need to think of a good spot to hang this up in the reptile room. Oh man. I'm sorry, I just like need a moment here. This is just, wow. Okay. 
Also, okay, I, I'm just gonna turn this away for a sec. Uh, okay. Wow. <sighs> Holy man. Holy. Oh, guys, this is just incredible. I'm gonna lift it up again. Just don't worry. <laughs> Nora, thank you so much for the $5. That's very kind of you. Very generous. Thanks so much. Guys. I don't even, I'm scared I'm gonna like drop it. Look at this thing. I know, okay, I, I, I just don't wanna take it out of the plastic yet. I don't know. It's just, oh my God, this is so cool. Thank you so much. Truly, thank you so much. I, I can't believe I have one of these now. <laughs> You guys are amazing. So I'm just gonna put that away for a sec. And uh, yeah, everyone just, uh, I don't, I, I'm so sorry. I'm a little bit speechless, but um, I, I don't know what to say. Just thank you, endlessly thank you. I mean, sure, people always say like, oh, but you know, it's you, you're the one who's posting all the videos and putting all the work in and you deserve it but still i wouldn't be here if you didn't enjoy and watch what i was posting so this is really this is everyone's award so thank you so much aiden only wow that is okay so there you go that's a very small percentage of people that's just crazy uh that's very Really puts it into perspective for sure. Oh. Okay, guys. So, um, I'm sure there are quite a few of you that maybe just tuned in and missed that. So, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll I don't know, I'll bring it out again so you can see it. But uh, for now, let's chat. If you guys have questions or if you want to talk about anything in particular. Let's take some time to do that. Call it a Q and A if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then I'll, I'll take the play button out again one last time uh, for anyone that maybe didn't have the chance to see it if they just tuned in now. But there's 105 of us, which is really cool. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have some water real quick. <laughs> feeling a bit warm. Okay. Let's see. Thank you. It's 1am. Well, thank you for tuning in at 1am. That is very, uh, very nice of you to do that. I, I would do it. I would probably do the same because I'm always up that late. Uh, Devin, people are drawn to good and real when they see it. I appreciate that. I definitely am real. Uh, it's up to you to decide if I'm good, but thank you. Um, all right, let's see. <laughs> Ali, when I saw your video feeding Pingu and that inspired me to get a crested gecko, two weeks later, I got my first lily white crested gecko. She's only four grams and I've had her for two months now. Congratulations. Wow. Lily White is your first crusty. Not to mention, take lots of photos of that animal because one of the things that's so fun about Lily Whites is just like how much they change as they grow. It's actually crazy. Like, especially since you got one that young, um, the changes are going to be wild. You're going to see some crazy color and pattern development. So... Yeah, congrats, that's really cool. Damien, how are the frogs? Frogs are doing awesome. Um, I am currently working on some pretty neat videos with regards to my frogs. Um, I'm going to be starting a Troy Goldberg inspired dry lock uh, background enclosure for uh, Cyanian Lazuli. And then I wanna introduce you guys to all my other frogs as well. 
because I have quite a few dart frogs now that I kind of just haven't been showing anyone for the most part. Unless you're following me on Instagram, sometimes I post them there. Uh, but yeah, they're doing really well. And yeah, thank you for asking. It's a project I'm working on to hopefully have out in the next like... Whoa, what? <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> oh my goodness. No way. Sorry, not to be distracted there. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Sorry, let me quickly finish that, that thought there. Um, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm so distracted. I, I hope to, yeah, have those videos up in the next few months. Um, I just really want to give the projects the detail they deserve. Okay, so Omid, who just gave that... I think that's... Is that the currency they use in Swaziland? I think. I hope. I mean, I'm embarrassed if I'm wrong. I mean, Omid, my friend Omid that just gave there. Thank you so much for the super chat, Omid. He's a dear friend of mine. <laughs> no, oh, God, he said hello. That might not be a good sign. I'm terrible with currencies. Um, so, I mean, sure, I know my pounds and euros and USD, CAD, etc. But anyhow, uh, Omid was my former flatmate like 10 years ago. Uh, we lived together and... I oh, mean, I miss him. Such a great guy. Thank you so much, Omid. You're so generous, buddy. Wow, brother. <laughs> okay, South Africa. I was close. I was close. At least I got that close, man. <laughs> um, puppy, do you own any leopard geckos? I do not. Um, no, I've had them before. And they are definitely such nice little geckos. They make great pets. But I don't have any right now. The sea bucket. How old is Sabzi? Sabzi just turned a year old a few weeks ago. And that was... Um, let me just see. Well, yeah. She just turned a year old. So if you want to see the video, you can definitely check that out. Um, it's just on my channel. And uh, yeah, you can see what we did to <laughs> celebrate her first birthday. Just over a year old now. Okay, let's see. Jaden, are you ever going to do a collab? I've done collaborations and I enjoy doing them, especially for like building a sense of community of fellow YouTubers. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't do them too often. I find that for whatever reason, my audience can be a little less interested in the collaborations than some of the other type of content. So, um, I don't know, like whenever I do them, I do them for me and to share something I'm excited about, which I do with all my content. But um, I think if someone presents a really cool idea and I like what they're all about and, and I feel like our, our views and goals or the way we share content kind of align, I'm really happy to work with those um, content creators, if that makes sense. It's never really been about like how many subs they have. Like, sure, it's it's exciting if you can benefit mutually from like posting two videos or one on each other's channels and maybe gaining some subs. But you'd be surprised how little that actually works. Like you could do a collaboration with a huge channel and gain like 50 subs. And I'm not saying that's not nothing, that's really great. But the point is you should collaborate because you just want to work with someone to produce something exciting, not because you hope to gain something from them. And I think that's how, uh, that's how I've kind of always gone about that, if that makes sense. Anyway, I, I digress. But any expansion plans, Damien asks. <laughs> Not really right now. Right now it's about like hunkering down and systematically posting content you guys really enjoy and um, just trying to grow the channel and um, create more financial sustainability in all honesty. I've always said I'm a one man team. So that makes things really tricky to be honest. Like 
I'm finding that as my channel grows, I'm, I'm being presented more and more uh, opportunities for brand deals. And that becomes more challenging to sort of navigate if I'm speaking openly about it and like negotiate and, and talk about all these things while trying to keep up with posting content. And so these are all really important things if you want to be able to, you know, uh, grow and create more financial stability as a full-time content creator, which I've already chosen to do. So yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, at some point, if it becomes feasible, sure, like um, expanding or having a facility or something would be really cool. Leanne, so when are you coming to visit us here in South Africa? Congrats. Oh man, I would absolutely love to visit in South Africa. Like, wow, I would, it would just be a dream. Um, you know, hopefully when the, uh, you know, situation at hand globally changes for the better, I would very much love to visit. And thank you so much for your uh, generous, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm seeing Omid's <laughs> super chat. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your generous uh, super chat there. That's very kind of you to need to do that. But thank you. It's very sweet. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just want to... Ain't no longer no chat, no more. Stacking up so play buttons. Just one, Omi. Just one right now. When we, back back in Haifa, we used to always... Uh, we just like chat and talk about life. And Omi, that was his like saying. He's like, hey man, you ain't no longer no child no more. You gotta watch it. Uh, it's his words of wisdom. So it was great to hear that. <laughs> Thanks, Omi. Thanks so much. Okay. What are pets you have that are not reptiles? I have plenty of invertebrates, like tarantulas and scorpions. Um, I have some fish in the paludarium that are doing really well. Plant lovers will get this. Do they count? Do plants count? They're like family members, right? But yeah. I mean, a lot of my animals are reptiles. And then, of course, amphibians, isopods. Oh, yeah, someone said that, too. Yeah, thank you, Ava. <laughs> or Ava. Thank you. Of course, the isopods. Um, yeah, lots. In fact, by number, well, <laughs> the isopods alone do that. But, uh, yeah, um, more that aren't reptiles than reptiles, really. Devin, how are the crocodile skinks? They are doing well. Um, to be frank with you, I had a few that were kind of giving me a scare from the new group that suddenly were dropping in weight a little bit. But I'm currently treating them with Panicure, which is a medication used to deworm animals. And so I'm hoping that that's going to help clear you know, their system and uh, well, yeah, make them feel better. And I'll be monitoring them closely to see how that treatment works. So, yeah, should be good. All right, let's see. I'm going to try and keep up. Sorry. Take care, Eva. Where is your silver play button cake? <laughs> True, eh? I make a cake for everything else, but I made no cake for myself. Clearly, I love my pets more than me. Oh, that's so funny. Leanne, plants always count. Exactly. Nova is doing great. She's one of the ones that's just like, what's all the commotion about? I'm doing fine, which I'm happy to see. Um, but yeah, there's just like three that I've been watching more closely. You may notice it's kind of quiet in here and that's because I actually unplugged all the filters because it makes so much noise. No one's complained about it in videos yet, funny enough. So I'm glad, I guess maybe it's like soothing, but I was worried that it would be making too much noise for the live stream. So I did have it off. Uh, Lounge Lizard, hi Diane, sorry I missed the start. No problem at all. So if you guys missed it, I will show you once more. Um, 
I'm not taking it out of the bag just yet, but I will for the actual video I'll make about reaching 100K. Here. Here we go. This is the play button. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Remove the plastic, no! Fine, fine, I will. I don't mind. Let's see. I just don't want to get fingerprints all over it, but let's have a good look at it. That is so cool. It's like a little hair on the, it's not a scratch on the mirror part, but look at that. It's so cool. Hey, look, there's a screen. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. This is incredible. Really. What an honor. Okay, I'm putting it back again for now. I Honestly, I can't believe I'm holding this in my hand. I don't want to make it too cheesy or anything, but like this really is something I've been working towards for so long. And um, it just really like is like the physical manifestation of all the hard work I've put into this channel. All the sleepless nights, long hours of editing and just tough calls in many cases. And it's just like such an honor to have that award. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Hayden, on a scale of one to 10, how shiny would you rate it? Um, Definitely a solid 10, you know? Yeah, definitely a 10. That, that award deserves a 10. I'm sure if I ever get a diamond one, it'll it'll be a solid like 20 over 10. Design and decor, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. Be happy for us. I was saying before, each and every one of you contributed to this happening. So thank you community. Now, let's see. You're gonna get hornworm juice all over it. Yes, I'll keep Sabzi away from it because we all know what she likes to do with her silkworms. We do not need any of that getting on um, this play button. HD arachnids, are they made of metal? I think they are. It definitely feels like metal. It's a little heavier than you would think too. So it's pretty cool, yeah. Let's see. Billy's, Billy, let's just say Billy. Uh, how is Pingu? Pingu is doing great. She's actually sleeping up in her tank there. And um, yeah, she's just chilling. I haven't noticed her digging in the lay box yet. If you watched my last video, we put in a lay box for her, but uh, she looks so plump, so. Hopefully that means something's gonna happen soon. But yeah, she's doing quite wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Doink you. Thank you so much for your super chat there. It's very generous of you. I, I just said <laughs> CCS. She hasn't laid any eggs yet. Nope. The seed bucket. What if Mr. Beast came? Mr. Beast. Uh, Lil Hype Man, what reptile would you like to own in the future? I'm very happy with the animals I have right now. Like I, I find myself in a position where I'm not truly thinking too much about which I would like to have next. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I don't, I really don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I will say, I do think that, uh, there's a few species that come to mind as like being super cool. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, there's a few species I think are super neat. Like, uh, emerald tree skinks are very cool animals, but then I also think about as much as it is about like what I'd like to keep myself, I do find 
that they're very similar in personality to, um, oh, I'm going to quickly just see, I saw a comment, Quinn, bye, enjoy dinner and thanks for tuning in. Um, they're similar in personality to tree monitors, dare I say. And I mean, they're not that similar in appearance, but they're like a green animal. So sometimes I, I like to think, okay, so if this, 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 and this are the animals I'd love to own someday, I could at least choose them based on creating more diversity in my pet family for the purpose of like showing different animals. Um, you know, if that makes sense, as opposed to like, having all these very similar care, like arboreal tropical animals, like the tree monitors. So I'm not sure if I'll ever get emerald tree skinks, maybe at some point, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. Also, I keep getting asked about chameleons. I do really like chameleons, but I really love Parsons chameleons, I think, if I were to get into them, and I don't have the room to own Parsons, so. Maybe someday. <laughs> Homie, don't give any of these clowns credit. I'm the only clown in the room, don't worry. Uh, it was all you, all they did was hit subscribe. Yeah, 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 no, but thank you guys. I really appreciate you following and I still stand by what I said, Omid. But thank you also for the other super chat man that's very kind of you um jake what advice or tips would you give to someone looking to get red-eyed crocodile skinks for the first time honestly the biggest one is get a captive bred animal if you can i know i might have made it look easy with like the last few you know, mini dragon project series, like, oh, you know, I just grabbed all these wild caught skinks and brought them home and they look great and whatnot, but it's not easy. They are very delicate animals and I'm spending a lot of my time taking care of them, medicating them. It's not fun. And if you want to do that and you have experience with that sort of thing by all means try and i wish you the best of luck but the best thing you can do if you truly want to own a red-eyed crocodile skink is support someone who's bred them in captivity and i know that those people are few and far between but that's really what i'd suggest doing support them and get yourself a hardy animal right that's the best thing um little hype man no yeah you guys aren't clowns that's just only joking around <laughs> um upset leopard where did you get your crested gecko food bowls i've said it before in a few videos um those are honestly just little ceramic dishes i bought at the dollar store they come in packs of three for like a dollar i mean kind of checks out and yeah they're just awesome ceramic glazed i've i've like 40 of them and I use them for my tarantulas I use them for my geckos I use them for all sorts of critters so whew, excuse me that was a big yawn my bad yeah it works well uh jam no my phone died did I miss anything I was here when you were talking about plastic off the <laughs> Not too much. We're just answering more questions. You're good. I love your channel. Any tips on raising and culturing isopods and dubia roaches? Can't really say much about the second thing. We're not allowed to have them in Canada, unfortunately. But uh, I have heard that they really like citrus fruit. Apparently that helps them be more prolific. So you could always try... Uh, um, yeah, you can always try... Whatever else you need to do to take care of them, you could try offering them some citrus fruit. But, uh, I mean, I've read a little bit on their care, but I can't really say much. But uh, as far as isopod culturing, it really depends on the culture. Just ensuring they have adequate ventilation, but also enough uh, humidity, depending on the species. And then just making sure they're really well fed, but not overfed, because then it encourages mites to come into the culture. And yeah, 
Reptiliatus, if you had to say one reptile name, what would it be? Like Pingu Nona, just curious. Sorry, you mean like if I had to choose one reptile that I like the most? Oh, if that's what you mean, that is not a question I feel like I could answer. I love all my reptiles. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, just because of how personable and everything she is, you would probably guess too that I... Oh, no, just a name. Huh, okay. Well, I was going to say, like, probably Sabzi because she's so personable. Um, but it's not to say she's, like, my favorite over everyone. Random name, like, just a name that I like. Um, I mean, I do really love the name Sabzi still because it just really suits her. Like, it means green vegetables in Farsi. So it's just kind of appropriate. I also really like Pingu because I think that's pretty wholesome. She literally looks like a little snowy blizzard too so <laughs> yeah um j chameleons de veo or velo i'm sorry if i'm saying that wrong but thank you so much for your generosity that's very kind of you to offer the super chat really appreciate you tuning in and thank you for your support uh salut les français ça va anonymous three four seven bonjour ou bonsoir Enchanté, merci d'avoir venu nous joindre. Thank you for coming and tuning in. Um, Jake Major, thank you for the advice. Next question. When are you shipping to the UK? Oh my goodness, I have no idea. I mean, probably not anytime soon. I, I, I don't really, I breed for fun with, you know, like... I breed to share with you. I breed because I think it's like the fulfillment full circle of keeping certain species. It's like, you can say like, I nailed it. Like it was like a really exciting experience to reproduce the animals that you're keeping. I don't do it as like a business opportunity. It helps with the cost of a lot of the things I do. And, and that's really nice. And it's always hard to let any animals go because... I definitely find myself growing attached to them. Like right now, I still have the two lychee babies that I haven't done an update on in a while. And I have the intention to keep one as I promised you all, but I can't bring myself to sell the other. I mean, I've offered it and it's been on the market for a little while and I get a lot of low ballers and it's really annoying to be honest. Like, um, but yeah, I'm like at this point where it's like, oh, you grow some attachment to them watching them grow up too so yeah let's see j chameleons de veo or velo i'm butchering that i'm so sorry um thank you again for another five dollars that's very kind of you very generous uh martin can you speak spanish uh sorry i cannot hola como estas uh that's about it <laughs> Denana, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible, sorry. Pardon. Quebecois, nice. Uh, where do you sell the lychee? Yeah, that's the thing, Jaden. I, it's hard, like, I, I really... I don't go on like any classified pages so much besides we have this Canadian one called Kijiji and I feel like that's worked pretty well for me to sell my animals. So a lot of the time I just sell my animals on Kijiji. And it's funny because people will like figure out that it's me. It's kind of funny, but also a little, not annoying, but I guess if I'm being direct, annoying. I'll get people that are like, know it's me selling an animal and contact me through my ad about an animal and just ask me questions about like taking care of pets because they know it's me. I'm like, what? What are you doing? That's not how this works. You're supposed to be telling me you're interested in the animal I'm selling. Like, don't, 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 don't do that, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's funny when people figure out, they're like, are you that reptiliatus guy? Or, or I'll sometimes get a message being like, hey, someone is taking your pictures and pretending to sell reptiles on on kijiji and i'm like no no that's that's actually me <laughs> so that happens too jam would you say it's difficult to look after as many pets as you have so i never want to you know lie about anything it's a lot of work 
I spend a lot of time taking care of the animals. I think one of the important things to keep in mind is that I love what I do. It's my passion and it helps me because half the time I don't feel like I'm working. I'm just enjoying watching my animals do their thing. Feeding them is so rewarding and interesting and, and sharing that with you. Uh, but with that being said, I think you guys should also keep in mind that I am doing this full time now. Um, YouTube as a platform has given me the opportunity to make this my full time job. So because of that, I have that like flexibility of time to be able to um, dedicate myself to doing this and and taking care of those animals all day and and filming and doing that so yeah um do you have a job aside from youtube and animals um i do work part-time like uh a shift a week it's sort of like for me it's like for the sense of community and seeing my former colleagues but i work one shift a week uh at a pet store in a in a city um where i, I used to work before things really picked up with YouTube and before I even moved across the country to BC and moved back. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a store I formerly managed the reptile department for. So I'm back there once a week kind of for fun, see my former colleagues, our, uh, you know, loyal customers. And, and uh, yeah, that's kind of like a nice little way to have some sort of social life right now and see people, ah, my nose is itchy. This happens every time I do a live stream for some reason. Talk too much and the nose just gets going. Allura, I can't believe I haven't asked you this before, but who do you trust with your creatures when you go away? I don't go away. No. Um, I, have, I haven't had to go away in some time, but I have two people that are very close to me that I trust with my animals that I usually will ask to take care of them for me. So I hire them or pay them to take care of the animals. Yeah. Damien, when are you going to do a feeder care video? So I'm actually right now working on, I think I mentioned this ages ago. I finally got to it. Uh, like a series where I show you guys how to breed certain types of feeder and kind of just I guess, get a financial break from not having to purchase them. And so the first video of that series that I hope to release will be on how to uh, culture or breed your own wax worms. So I filmed the first part about that, like setting up the culture and everything. And I hope to be able to, uh, yeah, I guess get the rest filmed after the culture sort of established and the moths have laid more eggs and produced some waxworms and such. So yeah, uh, it'll take some time. William, can leaf-tailed geckos breed? Of course they can breed. Yeah, they can. Uh, I've actually noticed a lot of my females have been laying eggs, which is pretty cool. Uh, Diane, please, can you do more videos on your Mexican black king snake? Yes! Kira is doing really good um she has i think she just shed recently too but yeah she's doing fantastic i take her out she doesn't musk anymore which is really nice we'll see how long that lasts but I mean, she's a king snake at the end of the day and she doesn't bite so that's also pretty sweet but uh yeah i definitely need to do an update on her for you guys soon the thing is that's really annoying um I feel like one of the big things you'd want to show with a video about a king snake or any snake is like feeding them, right? Like it's one of the exciting things you see about any animal. But I've noticed a lot of creators get their videos flagged for feeding snakes, even when it's um, like frozen thawed prey. And that's really annoying because, you know, at the end of the day, when you're doing this as a full time job, you don't want to ever have a video you work hours on, get flagged and demonetized because you're feeding like a frozen thawed pinky mouse too. I mean, I th it is no different than literally someone cooking chicken and showing the raw chicken. But that's kind of the problem. So we'll see. I think I'll show it. Uh, Oscar, quick question. Do you add springtails for your bioactive tanks for geckos? Yeah, absolutely. Springtails are really important. 
uh, you will know that I put them in the tank for uh, Tiki and the still unnamed female. Um, they're really good at consuming and preventing mold growth. Uh, ventilation is also important for that, but springtails do a great job of that as well. Take care, Billy. Uh, Cheryl, favorite plant? <sighs> that is a very hard question to answer. I love plants and there's so many beautiful plants out there in the world. But if I had to, if I had to narrow it down to just one, I don't want to sound, I don't know, cliche or lame. But honestly, can we just talk about Venus flytraps? It's just like the universe's mystery. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's just such an incredible example of evolution, but also like how, because how does something just develop different or how does something mutate to get to that point? I just, I mean, I don't know if we want to get all into it. I don't want to start this, but it, it's an interesting uh, example of, um, if you've seen Contact, it's funny because we were, I have my sister and one of my best friends and I were watching Contact and it talks about like the elements of faith in uh, science. So it's kind of like the harmony of science and religion. And anyway, it just kind of makes you have faith for um, science as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm being cheesy here, but Venus flytraps are just uh, incredible plants. Everything about them, the trigger hairs, their ability to digest insects, capture them. Very, very cool. Uh, Elsie's Gaming. Good evening. Congrats on the silver play button. It's because of you that I started to keep isopods aside from the normal crew. And I love how the channel has grown. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled that you keep isopods and that I had anything to do with that. And uh, yeah, I'm really honored. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, this message is hell for review. Huh? Will Pingu's Lily White Babies be for sale if everything works out? Also, you should name the female Toki Toke Taka, like Tiki Taka. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yes, they will be for sale, um, assuming that everything goes well. I do, as I said in the video, plan to hopefully keep, um, at least one baby, Lily White, and, um, probably one from Nona and, and Rambo too, and raise them and, and decide whether to keep them or not. But yeah, like for the rest, I'd probably keep them to about like 20 grams and then they'll be for sale. And Crested geckos are fairly easy to ship internationally through different services, so it may very well even be possible for um, viewers from around the world to can, to purchase one of them if they're interested in doing so. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, Anonymous347, do you have contact to Tanner from Serpa Design? Yes, I do. Tanner is such a nice guy. Um, He's, yeah, I don't even know where to start with Tanner. I think I've shared before on a live stream, like he's such a friendly guy and so talented artistically. His his ability to film and come up with these unique ideas for his videos and, and just like the, I don't know, like the, the artistry that you see emanate from him in the way that he creates escapes is just something else I and mean, i'm tooting his horn like crazy right now but he deserves it uh he's very very kind and generous he um he's jumped on a few video calls or at least a video call with me in the past to help me with a few questions i wanted to ask him about and yeah he's just always happy to help and he's just a very kind guy if you guys aren't following serpa design like 100 percent, just look him up leave my live stream. It's not important. No, I'm kidding. I mean, whatever you want to do, look up Serpa Design. It's just a fantastic channel. Really, really, really kind. Man, I love Tanner. Swiffer, hey, I hopped by to, to congrats you with your 100k. Thank you so much. The silver play button is here. I'm going to take it out again for anyone who wasn't here. Again, 
Sorry, it's in the bag, but I'm just gonna leave it in the bag for now. Woo, look at that. Super cool, thank you guys. You're amazing. So, um, oh, John, congrats on 100K. You're my favorite reptile YouTuber by a long shot. Will you catch up to Brian Barjack and Chandler's Wildlife before you know it? Yeah. Wow, that's uh that's a hefty goal to uh get to or uh <laughs> work towards, but honestly, I'm just honored to even be in the same community as them. Brian is such a nice guy and he's always just uh like a text or mess well, a message away. I, I just I'm, I, I think he's such a nice, humble guy, honestly. Every time I message him, I'm always shocked that with a person who's as busy as he is, he still finds the time to get back to me. And it's just so, so kind, honestly. I've, I've been a huge fan for years and years and years. And uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty great. But John, thank you so much for your super chat. That's really kind of you. And thanks for tuning in. Oscar, but won't the springtails climb out of the bioactive tank? I plan on getting a crested gecko and I was thinking to do some bioactive tanks. So sorry about it if this is a dumb question. No, it's not a dumb question at all. Uh, for the most part, you won't have any springtails jump out. Like it depends what kind of tank it is, but they want to stay where it's humid. If you have springtails leave your enclosure, they're not going to... In, um, what do you call it? Like they're not going to uh, infest your home. They require very specific environment to a very specific environment to thrive and, and reproduce and grow. And they won't have that just like chilling on the floor in your house. Like they'll just dry up and die. So um, yeah, they, they really don't leave or cause any harm if they did. Um, you might even find springtails in, in a houseplant pot. They're Columbola, I mean, that's one type of springtail. Like they're really all over the place. Oftentimes people even get them just from like a bag of substrate that they bought. I don't know if it's like dormant eggs or something or how that works, but you can find them. And, and sometimes they're mistaken for mites because there's some that are more round or globular body shaped and not just like the long rice grain shape like you see on some of them. So yeah, hope that makes sense. Don't fret about it. They're not going to escape. I don't even think they can climb glass, to be honest. Ben, any update on the red-eyed tree? <laughs> Actually, you're thinking red-eyed tree frogs. The red-eyed crocodile skinks. Yeah, the, uh, I was just sharing earlier that they're they're overall, they're doing really well. I mean, obviously, Sunny and Sappy and their babies are doing really well. Uh, but the uh, new ones, for the most part, are doing pretty well. But there's a few animals that kind of lost some weight and weren't looking so hot. So I have been treating everyone across the board, except for Sunny Sappy and the babies, uh, with Panicure, which is a deworming medication. So I'm hoping that that's gonna help. I will add to that, that it's been very challenging to do that because they really, um, when you're trying to administer the oral medication, they, they clench their jaw down. And I've never had such a hard time administering oral um, medication to a reptile as I have with this species. It's unbelievably tricky, but I found that by using a thin little sheet of plastic or um, a friend recommended using a guitar pick just gently along the lip, rubbing it there, they, they kind of like open their mouth and want to bite down on it, even though you can't gently pry open their mouth. Like with most reptiles, you can kind of just find the line and gently open their mouth, but they lock so hard. Uh, but yeah, with that plastic, they kind of open it and they want like the foreign object out of their mouth. Like they kind of just go like they're going all weird. And that's when you can carefully um, slide in the syringe with the appropriate dosage of medication, if that makes sense. So um, and yeah, so I've done two rounds of Panicure and yeah, that's that's been it so far. All right, do you own a Venus flytrap? I have one Venus flytrap. It's in one of the greenhouses back there for now. Yeah, I should do that, Jaden. Um, 
at some point. I mean, I do have my merch store, so there is a place where you can go. I mean, you guys should probably just see it down here. Some of the merch, if you click on any of those items, it'll take you to the overall like, larger store to consider purchasing things. Um, Trexy, hi, Dion. Hello. All right, guys. Let's see. Charm, you inspire me. Love you. Love you too. Thanks for the support. Well, friends, with that being all said, I want to thank you all so much for joining me this evening or this morning or this afternoon, depending where you're from. I'm going to give you all one last look for now at this incredible award. I'm so thankful to each and every one of you for helping me reach this milestone. Again, I couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this community. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what we get up to next, <laughs> where we'll be in another year from now. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's an honor to share this with all of you and yeah you mean so much to me and i really appreciate your support so i can't wait to see you all on tuesday i'm excited to show you guys the video that i have planned for then and uh well i'll give you a hint it's been a little while since we've done some invertebrate related content so hopefully you'll be into that but yes, thank you again. Well, let me look at you when I talk. <laughs> thank you again for watching. And uh, yeah, I'm going to call it there because I have to eat some dinner and I have a few things.